Hello and welcome to my Inktober 2019 challenge. Today is day 11 and the prompt is snow. Since I'm trying to stick to all Disney themed pictures for this Inktober, I really only had one obvious choice to go with. And so here is my drawing of Snow White. Again, I didn't want to do anything too crazy or drastic with this, I just wanted to keep her pretty strictly close to what Disney's vision of Snow White was, but drawn just slightly more in my style than the original animation style. I kept her in her classic dress with the slashed sleeves and the full skirt with little hints of the petticoat, but I kept all the shading and whatnot fairly straightforward. Snow White is such a classic and iconic character design that I wanted to keep this illustration pretty simple, so I didn't want to go too crazy with my shading. I did a little bit of line weight variation from place to place and a little bit of simple sort of hatching and cross hatching, but I kept it pretty straightforward. And we're up to day 12 and when today's prompt is dragon that means I have all the excuse that I need to draw Maleficent. And I didn't actually do the focus of this illustration on her dragon form, I just sort of kept it to the dragon shape in the background but actually have Maleficent herself in her regular sort of human form as the foreground. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of heavy, solid black in this picture, so I had to make sure that I worked in the folds and overlapping shapes and kept in plenty of areas to leave as highlights so I could have a lot of contrast between the different layers and pieces. Oddly enough, one of my favorite things to draw is always folds and fabric and heavily draped fabric. I always just think that's really fun and soothing and I really enjoy drawing fabric, so Maleficent's really big over-the-top cloak was a lot of fun for me. And of course, I've loved drawing dragons for a very, very long time. So even though I really only have the dragon's head in this picture, you still have those fins and the horns and the dramatic mouth. It's really still a lot of fun, even though I only have a small portion of the dragon in this illustration. Today is day 13 and the prompt is Ash and I'm pretty sure my mother would never forgive me if I passed up the chance to put a Mary Poppins themed illustration into my Inktober collection for this year. So with the prompt of Ash, the obvious choice for me is a chimney sweep from Mary Poppins. There were really two main challenges with this illustration. 
The first was the Chimney Sweeps broom because I didn't want anything that was too large and black and heavy because that would just look like a big empty hole on the page and be too heavy and throw everything off. So I made sure to add enough fullness that I thought it definitely read as his proper prop, but not so heavy and dark by keeping sort of light brushy stroke sweeps of my marker. The next was differentiating between just regular shading and also making him look like he was covered in patches of soot and ash. So my solution was basically to put down sort of a logical and methodical shading and then to go back in and add some very random crosshatched patches to represent the soot and ash. Overall, I guess it kind of worked. I mean, there's definitely some areas that do not look like they make sense as a shadow, so I hope that it reads. I don't know. What do you think? Alright, so it is a day 14 and the prompt is overgrown. Now, my first initial thought with this was the Sleeping Beauty castle after the curse has been in place for a very long time and the castle got kind of overgrown, but that seemed a little vague and maybe hard to read. And also maybe just a little bit boring for me, maybe a little too obvious, I don't know, it just didn't strike my fancy. And then I realized that Sleeping Beauty's Castle is not the only overgrown structure in Disney. So I decided to go with Rapunzel's Tower because A, the tower itself was very covered up in ivy and whatnot, not to mention it was in that very overgrown sort of clearing so that it was hard to see from the outside. And also I kind of liked the extra play that her hair is just so ridiculously long that I'm sure it counts as overgrown. So I drew this as if you're just breaking into the clearing and peeking through the foliage there and I suppose it's nighttime and I was trying to represent the lights of the floating lanterns. They kind of just look like cotton balls in the sky to me now, maybe mistakes are made, whatever. I'm stuck with it now and here it is for all to see. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little simple, but I think it's fun and cute. Alright, day 15 and today's prompt is legend, so the clear and obvious choice for me is Mulan.
I'm always partial to when they give a princess a weapon, so Mulan has been a favorite for a very long time. This is another one that I kept pretty simple. I was just relying heavily on a dramatic pose and then some high contrast shading. Day 16 is wild, and I played with several different ideas for this one. At first I was thinking Jane and Tarzan, but then I was thinking more like wild animal, go a little more wild with it. And then I was thinking the Lion King, but I really wanted to go a little cutesier with it, so I ended up with Thumper from Bambi. I'm not sure why, I have not seen this movie in like a bazillion years, but I just always thought this scene was really, really cute. I was kind of testing myself to make sure that I could really get the two different rabbits to be clearly two different characters. But overall I kept this pretty simple. Not a very dramatic or involved background, just a little bit of grass and flowers to sort of give them a space to be existing in. Alright, and we're up to day 17, and today's prompt is ornament. And when you're doing a series of Disney illustrations and the word ornament comes up, the obvious choice to me is a princess's tiara. And I looked at a bunch of the different princesses' tiaras. There's actually surprisingly few of them really in the grand scheme of things. And even though I've already done a couple of Rapunzel illustrations, she just clearly has the most intricate tiara, so that made the most sense to me for the prompt. And it really didn't take me long to realize I was shooting myself in the foot. This is a very intricate piece that was very time consuming to get sketched out, let alone actually get all the details worked in. I've always been really interested in fine jewelry, so I'm kind of surprised now that I think about it that I've never done a real jewelry illustration before. So this was definitely branching out for me and I'm really glad I did it, but it was very time consuming.
And as Rapunzel's tiara winds to a finish, that completes day 17 and the second full week of Inktober, and I have yet to miss a day, so that's exciting. But be sure to check in every Thursday of this month, and I'm going to have more of these Inktober videos. Keep cheering me on, make sure that I keep up with this and don't give up. But also on every Monday of this month, be sure to tune into all of my regular content. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.